Okay, in this video, I'm going to finish off exercise, no, question 3 of exercise 3D of the book Fundamental Applied Mathematics. We're on page 87, and we're going to do part 3. So this is a direct continuation, clearly, from parts 1 and 2. So for that reason, I won't go into the, the same detail. Now, thus far, this, this question has turned out to be a pain in the face, and I've got to be honest, part 3 is no, dif no different. Um, it's not difficult in its theory, even though there is, uh, there is something new, but the, the main difficulty, I suppose, is in the manipulation of the formula. And something I've said in the past I'm not good at. Some people are very good at it. I just happen to be poor enough at it. So, leading on from, we'll say, part two. Now, the question here states, prove that the particle will strike the plane horizontally if, and we're given kind of a, an expression in relation to tan theta. So, before I continue, I, don't, I want to show you something here. If I draw my xy plane, like so, and I draw my incline. Now, usually what we do is we go about, we draw our uh, we draw our x prime and y prime uh, axes making our x prime, y prime plane and we solve it in terms of what's happening on the incline. Now the thing is, it says here if the particle will strike the plane horizontally. So it's saying if the particle is parallel to the x axis. So that's different because, well how do we get a condition relating to the x-axis if we're using the incline and the answer is we can't so what we are required to do here and let's move that paper what we are required to do here is revert back to using the xy plane and that's it's it's not, not difficult but it is new so how do we do this well first of all of course if this will if this is our, our velocity vector instead of using the angle what was it theta here like this the angle of projection now, of course, will be theta plus alpha. So I'm going to call uh, gamma is equal to theta plus alpha. All right. The gravity vector will now just act in the negative y. So that goes back to like pretty much exercise 3a. So that, that, that's, in that sense, it's easy. Now, the difficulty here is not the difficulty, but the condition is we need to find out when the particle is going to hit the plane, the, we'll say the incline horizontally. And the condition for this is, well, of course, this will be the end of the particle's motion. And our usual condition for that is that s sub y is equal to zero. But if you look at this, when it hits the plane horizontally, s sub y is non-zero. In actual fact, s sub y it could be quite large. So, we need to do a small bit of, <laughs> a small bit of trickery here. So I'm going to redraw the plane, or not the plane, I'm going to redraw, we'll say, the incline like this. And I'm going to say that the point of this right triangle is where the particle hits the plane. And if this is S sub y, the height above the x-axis when it hits, and this is S sub x, that the range, and this is the angle alpha, well then of course the relationship here, so we can say tan alpha, is equal to S sub y over S sub x. And therefore, s sub y is equal to s sub x times tan of alpha. So, in order to get the time at which the particle hits the, the uh, incline at a horizontal to the x-axis, or parallel to the x-axis, we need to use this expression. This is, the, uh, this is the condition. And from there on, we plug the time into the fact that v sub y will be equal to zero, because, of course, it's going horizontal. And then we will be will be uh, will be fine from there. So, just very quickly, uh, you've asked. I'm sure you're you're well able to follow these things at this stage. So we had u cos. Excuse me, you couldn't see that. U cos alpha plus theta. I'm just going to call that gamma. So we'll say this. That that is that expression is the same as that. The time is u cos uh, gamma times t. The acceleration, as we said, is zero because we're just operating in the x y plane now. Similarly, on the right-hand side, we have u sine gamma, or u sine alpha plus theta, and then v is u sine gamma plus gt. I'll take away this. The acceleration is g, the s sub y is, is normal, and so on. Look, we, we, that's something we've done in the past. So, our condition was that s sub y is equal to s sub x times the tan of alpha. Alright, the tan of alpha. So, let's... Let's uh, play around with this. 
sit there now. I have some notes here because I don't. This is quite long, and I don't want to make a mistake in this. So let's do that. So we have u sine gamma times t. Move this up here. Plus g over two times t squared is equal to u cos of gamma t times the tan of alpha. All right, that that's grand. So let's just rearrange this. So we get g squared or g over two times t squared plus t times u sine gamma minus u cos gamma tan alpha. And that is equal to now zero because we've brought across this. And this of course is a quadratic uh, or a polynomial of degree two. And the easiest way to solve this of course is to pull out t. So one of those t's will go to zero. So I'm just gonna get rid of this t or get rid of that t like that. So if you just rearrange this, I'll let you work that out, but if we rearrange it, we're going to get the following. T is equal to two over g times u cos gamma tan alpha uh, minus u sine gamma. All right, and that's the, that's the expression for time. So at this time, s sub y is equal to s sub x times the tan of alpha. And also the particle is at its maximum range, like so. All right, so that's that's pretty straightforward. Uh, we've done something like that definitely in the past. Now, the, uh, I'm not going to say the difficult part, but they will say the kind of tricky parts are coming up. What we need to do is plug this time into v sub y. So we know that at the time when the particle is at its maximum range, it's hitting the, the incline horizontally. If it's hitting the incline horizontally, there is no y component, and therefore v sub y is equal to zero. So I just need to plug this t in up here. All right, so what I'm gonna do is actually rub out uh, all of this. So take note of it if you like, but I'm gonna rub it out because I have a finite amount of space. All right. So once again, what we're doing is plugging t into v sub y being equal to zero. All right, so what we get is the following. We get u times the sine of gamma plus g times two over g times u cos gamma tan alpha minus u sine gamma. Now that's a very big mouthful there. And of course, we're setting this to zero. The next thing we need to do is rearrange it. So first of all, we can see we have u, u, and u all setting to zero, so we can cancel those, like so. We can cancel g, and what we're left with is that sine of gamma plus two times cos gamma tan alpha minus sine of gamma is equal to zero. Now from here we need to look at our maths tables. Actually we won't, we'll look at something else first. If you look in the, uh, well the answer, the answer is tan theta, so we're looking for tan. Now we already have a tan alpha, so what we need to do is convert this sine, this cosine and this sine to tan. And the easiest way to do that is just divide across by cos gamma. Because if you do that, this will go away and these both will turn to tan. So we'll divide by uh, cos gamma. And what we'll get is the following. We're going to get tan gamma, tan gamma plus 2 times tan alpha minus 2 times tan gamma is equal to 0. All right, so that's good so far. And look, we see tan, tan alpha, or excuse me, a tan gamma here. So rearrange that and we get negative tan gamma is equal to negative 2 tan alpha. And of course, rearrange that. Tan gamma is equal to 2 tan of alpha. 
And it looks, that's, that's a very uh, straightforward expression. Tan alpha is equal to 2, sorry, excuse me, tan gamma is equal to 2 tan alpha. Alright, but what do we know about gamma? Gamma is equal to theta plus alpha. So what I'm going to do now is once again rub out this. So take note of what the pieces you need to. So, so far, we, we, you know, you should be uh, aware of the fact that you're going in the right direction because we're getting expressions that look pretty, pretty straightforward. So we have tan gamma is equal to 2 tan of alpha, where gamma is equal to alpha plus theta. So if you look in your log tables, you'll find that, you'll find the following. You'll find tan of A plus B is equal to tan A plus tan B over 1 minus their product, tan A, tan B. Alright, so let's just apply this to what we have. And we're going to get tan theta plus tan alpha over 1 minus tan theta tan alpha is equal to 2 tan alpha. So let's just rearrange that by pulling up this expression to the top right. And we're going to get tan theta plus tan alpha is equal to 2 tan alpha minus 2 tan squared alpha tan theta. That looks another big mouthful. But once again if you look at it you'll find we have a tan alpha and a tan alpha. So we can rearrange that to get negative tan alpha is equal to negative tan theta minus 2 tan squared alpha tan theta. And once again, if you look at that, well, of course, first of all, these all become positive. But we have a tan theta here and also a tan theta there. So let's just rearrange that. Like so. All right. So we're getting close. We're getting very close because we have tans. Now, if you look at the question, it says tan theta equals something. So we need to isolate tan theta. So let's just do that. So we have tan theta is equal to tan alpha over, uh, over what? Over 1 plus 2 tan squared alpha. The next thing we need to do is note the fact that tan is equal to sine over cosine. So what we're going to get is that tan theta is equal to, now this needs to be neat here, so we get sine alpha over cosine alpha over 1 plus 2 sine squared alpha over cosine squared alpha. And here out it's just literally going to be a manipulation of what we have. So once again I'm going to clear my board, so I'll pause there for a moment. And just give me a, give me a second here now and I clear this up. So I had that tan of theta was equal to sine of alpha over cosine of alpha over 1 plus 2 tan squared, oh not 2 tan squared, 2 times sine squared alpha over cosine squared alpha. Now, I hope that you're able to see the next thing you need to do basically is rearrange this by bringing this expression up here or by adding this and flipping the flipping the 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 ratio or the fraction. So what we're going to get if you do that is that tan of theta is equal to well we had sine alpha and we had cos alpha up here. Now if we add this expression and this one you're going to get I'll just draw it over in the corner. So we're going to get sine squared 
over cos squared plus 2 over sine squared over cos squared. So what happens is you can pull this above the top of the line, which is what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to put this cos squared up here by getting cos squared over sine squared. Remember, if you're dividing by a fraction, you turn it upside down and multiply it by. So, and this was uh, sine squared over cos squared plus 2. Alright, so that should be reasonably straightforward. You just need to be uh, careful with your algebra. So we just did a small bit of adding there. Alright, I hope that wasn't too fast. So what do we do next? We do some cancelling. This cosine goes, the square goes. This That should be sine squared. So the square goes there and this sine goes. So that's incorrect. Now we get cos over sine. Like so. And we're left with and I'll do it in red. And we're very close, we're about four lines from the end now. The tan of theta is equal to cos alpha over sine alpha over 2 plus sine squared. Oh, is that sine squared or cos squared? 2 plus. Uh, let me think there. I'm after, I think I'm after spotting an error. Cos squared over sine squared. No, this should be cos squared over sine squared. Alright. 2 plus, and here is cos squared over sine squared. Like so. Alright. So once again, we do the exact same thing, and we bring up our sine squared. All right, so this becomes tan is equal to cos alpha over sine alpha times sine squared alpha over two sine squared alpha plus cos squared alpha. Alright, of course the sign here cancels with the square and we're getting very close now because we have tan theta is equal to cos alpha sine alpha over 2 sine squared alpha plus cos squared alpha. And I was, kind of, I was really struggling when I saw this, I said, how am I going to manipulate this? And the answer is the following that cos squared plus sine squared is equal to 1. So when you plug that in here, you're going to get the following. You're going to get the answer, which you're supposed to get. That's tan theta is equal to cos alpha sine alpha over 2 minus cos squared alpha. Now, that was a headache, definitely for me. I'm assuming it was a headache for you as well. So that's question three. Now, to be honest, that was a ridiculously long question. That is definitely not, it says leaving cert higher level 1979. I must be missing something there because that would take me way, uh, too, way longer in an exam anyway. It's too long that I can see for an exam question. But either way, look, that's just, that, that's that done. So <laughs> thanks, for, uh, thanks for watching, pass it on to your friends and subscribe to my channel.